I'm Sharon, digital campaigner at Amnesty. I've been having a chat with some people here about responsive campaigning and thought I'd share an example and perhaps some tools and tactics that I can, that can maybe help you in your own brainstorming sessions. So, what if I told you that your next campaign was to take on the world's biggest travel website? Quite exciting, Airbnb. Then what if I told you that with only three weeks to go, the target was going to have to completely change? That's how I started 2019. For crisis and tactical campaigning, we often have to be responsive, quick, and able to change direction really rapidly. Our team had been working on a report on companies doing business in the illegal occupied Palestinian territories. Our primary target was Airbnb, but as you know with research, it, the report was delayed by quite a few months, and um, Human Rights Watch pipped us to the post <laughs> so with their own research very similarly. Uh, in November, they launched their own report, and the next day, Airbnb announced it would delist from the settlements, which was great news, and they were doing what we were asking them to do, which was a huge win for Human Rights Watch and also, I guess, for us. Uh, but it meant that we had to shift focus really, really quickly and translate this, um, this huge document of 200 pages into a really punchy campaign. Targeting online tourism giants profiting from stolen land and shifting our focus from Airbnb to the second target in the campaign, TripAdvisor. And by the time our report was done, we only had less than a month to do it. So such a hefty report uh, targeting such a huge global campaign was deserving of its own multi-channel campaign. To give the campaign a longer life, we forecast three com spikes. So spike one, January launch um, and the campaign stunt itself. Uh, spike two, maybe Eurovision, and spike three, that could look like something like a holiday vlog in the summer. Um, yeah, but for this one, we'll just focus on spike one. And how did we plan our activity in three weeks and activate the campaign in such a short, responsive time? So we decided to, as this campaign was gonna be a longer running campaign, uh, we decided to create our own sub-brand called Checkout. Um, that would form the visual identity of the campaign, uh, the strap line, the kind of play on words, um, the hashtag, and also form the basis for online and offline materials. From there, we could tailor the message to different channels and for different audiences. Um, so for the stunt itself, we decided to go quite big um, and had a bit of a brainstorming session. So in the brainstorming session, no idea is a bad idea. And for those of you who were at Richard Rove's video session just now, oh, there you are, hey, this might sound a bit familiar, um, but, uh, but it's there's, there's quite useful for using the technique in offline brainstorming too. So, um, sorry to repeat that, uh, but has anyone used the yes and technique before in improv, perhaps? Great, cool, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great, so yes and, basically you accept and expand on the idea. So for our brainstorming technique, it went a little bit like this. Uh, how about we bring a beach to TripAdvisor? And how about we put it in Soho Square? Yes, and we'll have people in beach outfits, and we'll have barbed wire, and we'll have a controversial sign that sums up our campaign. Yes, and it'll be the middle of January. <laughs> So on the coldest day in January, we built a fake settlement beach in London, complete with barbed wire and a sign that says no Palestinians allowed. We also had some activists in beachwear pretending to be on holiday, calling on TripAdvisor to check out of stolen land. And this worked for creating a buzz. We had loads of photojournalists covering the event and a good level of coverage um, in national and international media. And that's just a bit of a look at our press coverage. Um, our main audience for this campaign was also what we call young optimists. And so 18 to 24 year olds um, so into social justice and digital savvy. So we decided to go quite big on digital and created a campaign launch video which explained the situation in less than a minute with a strong hook and strong theory of change. I um, guess I could play it, I guess. Yeah, why not? Got some time. So we had a bit of a brainstorming session with actually Richard uh, beforehand in January. 
to um, target quite a specific niche audience who were kind of interested in this um, this campaign area. And yeah, I guess it just kind of goes on. Just forward that bit. Oops. Okay, so just a little sneak peek. Uh, so as you can see, we were able to do quite a lot in three weeks. And coming together and being responsive, quick and adaptable meant that we were able to be quite uh, flexible in our approach. And although this was on a big scale, we had quite a small budget and did everything in-house. So using this brainstorming technique, like uh, yes and, it can be applied no matter how big or small your organisation really. So it helps you think broadly and um, hopefully might be help you, helpful for the next time you find yourself uh, up against the clock like me right now. So thanks very much. Cheers. <laughs>